Welcome to the next session. We have here on stage Max Wittig and Nate Habian um, <laughs> from the Code Teams Com team presenting uh, Python GitLab. Uh, so they're maintaining this for us and for the community. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody again to this lovely conference in Zook location and uh, today we're going to talk about a library uh, we maintain and there's also some other people involved but it's basically about automating your job if your job has anything to do with GitLab you know then maybe you can automate it with this and that's why we are talking about it so I'm gonna have a quick again uh, you know not that much because it's just 20 minutes so we need to rush it maybe let's see um, so we're first starting what it is and how to use it and then we show like a live demo, a fun live demo uh, with the library itself, so with Python code and the other thing is with the CLI which will be presented by Nates. So let's start with what it is, you know, like uh, it's an open source project, right? It's an open source conference, so it kind of needs to be an open source project. So it's on GitHub as well, like where else would it be? You know we have GitLab, but to be honest, where are the open source projects? So um, this on GitHub, you can find it at Python GitLab, Python GitLab. Um, it's, uh, we have a, it's a Python project, so this is kind of an example how to use it. We will go more into detail later. Um, you can also use the command line interface, which is less well maintained than the Python because we don't really use it. But oh well, it works. You see, you can have a YAML output, it's kind of cool. And um, you can also get it on PyPy. You, you can just install a pip install, Python GitLab. Don't do it in your system, please. Please don't do it in your system. Um, you can also use the Docker image. Just, just run the Docker image. Uh, you can, you can. It's also used by other projects, so we use it internally as well for our inner source code. Um, it's also used by other projects in the wild. So we got a couple downloads, 1.4 million. Kind of cool. So um, let's also go over the authors. Like uh, we we didn't create this, right? It was created by Shavon Porcentek. I probably butchered that name, but um, he created it initially. Um, but then he stopped maintaining it because he changed the company. Uh, so I started to pick it up because I contributed a bit at the beginning, and then he was like, "We need maintainers because I'm not going to maintain this anymore." So initially, it was just me and Roger, like reviewing merge requests, right, more or less. And then um, Nate's joined later on. Um, I, I stepped down a bit, to be honest. Like, uh, there's so much going on at the moment. Like, we also have this, um, these two, like Nate and John, they're really, like, on it. They're contributing so much and improving improving it so much. I mostly just check it out, and but there's so much, it's, uh, it's crazy. But, um, no, that's for later. Uh, okay. And um, yes, next slide. Okay, and that's for you. <laughs> Nate, <Nights, laughs> talk uh, about more. <laughs> yeah, just a kind of quick intro as well. Um, the way I joined the, the code team actually was um, through this project. Yeah, yeah, it was actually I just contributed a small pull request, and then realized, hey, Max, you're actually from the same company. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then from that point on, I kind of joined yeah, the team as funny well. Funny coincidence. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> um, so I'll just talk about um, a little bit about why we think you should use it. <laughs> um, we. we uh, a lot of uh, people who, think I, you know, it's just a, uh, I just need for a thing, um, I, I can just do a bash script or something. Uh, even, for example, GitLab's own team sometimes have to instead of using our library. Um, but so, yeah, I have here, like, it's just a few curl calls. Why would I download a, a Python package for that? And then you see that as soon as you do that, there's this issue with URL encoding, there's uh, pagination, you have to parse stuff. And um, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be doing that, but just have a one-liner that does that for you. Uh, yeah, and so if you do use Python GitLab, you will get uh, proper URL encoding. And you know all of these issues are kind of simple, but all together it becomes a, a, a big thing to, to solve. So Python GitLab knows which endpoints need en URL encoding and uh, which don't. So it's instead of figuring all that out, you just have it. Um, it'll do pagination properly. Uh, it'll handle rate limits and all kinds of retries. Um, and that's all things that we also got through contributions from people that really specific use cases. Um, so 
uh, that's one thing, and maybe it's another one is the complex API attributes that you just don't know. So sometimes GitLab expects a uh, comma delimited string, and sometimes it expects a proper array. Uh, all of that has been figured out by the community already, so you don't have to do it y yourself. And then we also have a few, um, like, let's say, generic methods, so that if something is new in GitLab and not implemented in the library, you just use a generic method, and you can still get that information. And finally, what's I think also really important is that um, you can just pass arbitrary um, API parameters. Again, if something isn't finished yet in the in the client, um, you can just as soon as GitLab has it, you can use it. So that's a little bit on, on why you should <laughs> use it, and I'll go back to Max now for a little demo. Yeah, let's have a little fun demo. So I hope it works. You know, and it's on stage. Might not work. You know how it goes. Let's see. Uh, uh, what did I call it? Okay, that's cool. It seems to do something. So let's see if it works, right? Like, let me source the environment again because I'm afraid now that it doesn't work. Um, I, I actually set it to white for this presentation. I don't use the white theme, so. Um, Let's go to the, uh, this one. So Nate's prepared a little example here. Like uh, he contributed to my Python GitLab demo project. That's kind of cool. I'm just gonna try. So I'm gonna merge this. Oh no! I didn't assign it to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ah, oh, it works! Amazing. So sometimes there's like you know when you're reviewing a merge request, you think it's really cool, right? And but then you you want to have some human emotions in this, right? You want to like really say it's your merge request, right? It's really cool what you made, right? And then you want to maybe express your feelings as well instead of just clicking merge, right? So this little script just writes looks good to me after you merged. Um, so you can that's a use case, a valid use case for uh, automating, right? To have some human emotions in reviewing. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, go over this. So what we do is like get the client here. I'm just gonna explain it a bit. Like uh, the library is imported at the top and we get the client here. You can pass in your private tokens. You can also use the CI job tokens, right? You can use the OAuth tokens as well. And um, after this, we're just gonna go into this watch merges um, thing. You see here, you don't need to like uh, have curl look up this list, you can just specify the parameters and um, you get um, you get attributes as well. Uh, most of them are in here, so for convenient access and there's also, there's also autocomplete and stuff working, right? Um, I guess. Um, so if you go here, you can see the actual creation of them, which also interesting, which maybe a lot of people don't know, or I think they don't know, um, there's this lazy mode, so we, we you get the project, but this doesn't actually trigger an API call. Um, so it's just pretend it's basically just pretending to get it the virtual object and then creating this this node on top of it. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's a little script. It's I think it's um, it's a good overview of the project. Maybe I can uh, provide the link later if somebody's interested into in like human interaction in, in merge requests. Maybe. Um, okay, but uh, I think that was the live demo. I hope I didn't make it a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I just wanted to also show how to use the CLI. Um, <laughs> that is obvious from the slide. Live demo <laughs> library, yeah. Now we got CLI. Uh, um, yeah, because you can use this and you don't have to know uh, a line of Python, basically. Um, and again, um, s uh, so that you don't have to figure out all the things th that you would with um, with curl and so on. Um, so I'll just go in here and just kind of show you. I um, wanted to find like a valid use case, which would be, for example, GitLab generic packages. So if you have um, an application that doesn't use dependency management, you just have a generic package, you upload it, and then other projects will maybe download it. Uh, and, and so that you don't have a curl calls doing this, we'll just have a quick look at what we have here. Um, so just created a simple CI uh, pipeline. Uh, and if you see, um, we just have the Docker image that you saw earlier, um, and you just call GitLab generic package, upload 
um, you give the CI project ID, which is provided, and you see that we don't actually pro provide any tokens because it just detects the CI job token. Uh -huh. uh, okay. I'm going to need some <laughs> Swiss friends. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So this will just, um, like on any tag, for example, it'll just take the file and uh, upload it to the, the package registry of that project. Um, and now I'm going to have to zoom out again. So <laughs> <laughs> So we had a, a tag here, which we, if we look at the pipeline. And, and that's the, yeah, it. And just have a look at the registry to see if it's there. And as you see, it was uploaded. And then we do the same for, let's just take this. For other projects, for example, we'll now want to use that. Where's the zoom? <laughs> but it's the same idea is that um, you just provide it with a, an ID, which can be uh, like a, an integer, or I think GitLab will know if you give it a string to just uh, URL encode it so that uh, it'll just always work. And then you, you can download that file from others. I mean, this is like maybe a silly example, but um, just to have a, a nice way of uh, working with the API instead of you know having PowerShell bash and a, a bunch of different scripts doing all of this. Um, so that's one use case, and um, something that we had recently was, for example, um, using project access tokens and group access tokens to manage your scheduled pipelines. Um, but because it's a token, you can't um, take ownership of a pipeline through the UI. You can only do it through the API. And again, here it's just like you install it or even just run it with a single line and take ownership of that. So it just makes a lot of things more convenient. But uh, you can just maybe go through the documentation and have a look at what it does. Yeah, so that would be like the, the CLI part, just so you, that you know that it exists and it can do uh, most of the things that the API offers. Yeah. And maybe just like a quick uh, note on like what's coming next. I think that um, we definitely want to rewrite the CLI to be a bit more uh, user-friendly. That's a big thing and also just to give support for GraphQL, which you'll hear more about a bit later, but that's something that we'd really like to do uh, in the near future. So I think that'll be yeah, it from I my side uh, as well. The last page was just contacts. Oh no, I need to go back. Yeah, that's just contacts. So um, best is uh, using the issue tracker or the chat. Please don't email us. You know. We don't <laughs> like emails, but uh, if you really have something, you can also email. But uh, we prefer the chat or the issue tracker if you have some issues with the library or want have a question, then you can go this way. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Do we have any questions here in the room? Perfect. One. Yeah. So you said you, you're going to rework uh, the CLI. So would you recommend now to do test drives or even to, to use it in, in productive use, or should we wait until you've cleaned up the, the CLI? <laughs> I think um, for the rewrite, we want to make it um, like with very few breaking changes. So it'll just be like maybe instead of um, project dash create, it'll be project space create. So, um, but <laughs> um, I think it's fine to use like the CLI um, doesn't have complex use cases like the API so yeah I think it's okay so I'll give it a try perfect thanks any other questions here in the room perfect another well it's it's, it's not really a question but something uh, like we've done with the the GitLab IPA so not not me but Alina my apprentice so uh, she was really awesome, and I mean the documentation is really awesome. So, so I could just say her, yeah, use 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 this tool and 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 use it for this. So, what what we've done is, um, when our instance started growing, people added more runners, mm, and yeah. so yeah, 
A lot of the runners were ch just a one shot, so we started creating issues, a tool to create issues um, for the groups, to for people to remove them or automatically remove them. And another thing is that we we maintain our internal Linux distribution and we do some hardware testing. And sometimes the hardware is broken. And one indication for this is that like 50 test runs in a row fail on this hardware runner. So we made a, a dashboard based on also using the API. So yeah, I guess that's a thank you for maintaining this uh, awesome tool. Thank you. We also have the same script, the runner remover script you also use. It runs like every day. It removes the runners. And then also we remove webhooks as well, like people adding webhooks that go to nowhere and that go to the internet, even though we have no internet access. Stuff we remove, you know, it's all running since like it's barely touched, you know. It's these are these projects that we have internally that we need because of GitLab reasons, and that's kind of why we started this library. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should open source this little thing, yeah. <laughs> it would be kind of cool. Okay, we would have time for a last question here. Anything? Perfect, then thanks a lot for the lightning talk again. And um, after a short little break, please don't leave the room. We will continue with GitLab upstream contribution. So applause for the boys.